Um, you know the things that our Henderson have done for bioscience. Yes, they feel um, cheated at some point. Well, congratulations to all the winners at the elections. We'll be looking at some of the lessons garnered from that. We're also be talking about the small and medium scale enterprises in our state with a lot of things happening. And of course, the presentation of the budget may also be part of the discussion this morning. So there's so many things to actually talk about. I'm sure you're ready to go with us this morning. But before that, I want to remind you that today is another opportunity for you to give in your best, for you to actually step aside and tell yourself that it's a new beginning. It's not about failing, but failing to rise and learn that lesson from that will definitely help you. So gather yourself together, put yourself together, guide your loins, and get started because you will not lose if you persevere and it will be over until you win. Let's take a look at the Western Marvel this morning. What to get by achieving your goal is not as important as what to become by achieving your goals. What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals and it's coming from Zig Ziglar. Well, this morning Zig Ziglar is trying to make us understand that achieving your goals is not about the money that is in your pocket, it's not about all those things that you count every morning, every afternoon and every night. You wake up thinking about how much you've made and all that. It's not that important. What's actually very important is the fulfillment of your dreams. It's what have you become? Are people excited when they think about you? What actually makes people you know, remember you and chuckle or smile at least? So what to become by achieving your goals is far, far important. Are you a go-getter? Yeah, if you are one, then have you achieved your purpose? Do you put smiles on people's faces? Are you fulfilled every day of your life? If not, then you need to strive harder because the money you can't be as important as the lives you touch. That's actually what the words of Marvel is telling us this morning. So as you're stepping out today, remember to give someone a smile, remember to pat, give somebody a pat, a pat on the back, remember to encourage someone, remember to just do something that someone will remember you for today. Well, let's get on with the news updates from here in Omaha. And that's it, Governor Wokese Ikbazo has presented a $136,617,316,000 2020 budget to the Irish State House of Assembly. The 2020-2022 million term draft estimate is slightly less than $140,944,888,000 717 naira, 17 naira of 2019 budget report. Presenting the budget at the floor of the House of Assembly, Governor Okoze has noted that the moderate decrease is occasioned by his administration's resolve to formulate a realistic budget while working hard to improve revenue generation and expenditure management approach. Governor Ibazo explained that the draft budget is made up of a total of 66 billion, 802 million, 247,316 naira as recurrent expenditure and capital expenditure of 69 billion, 815 million, 600,000 naira. But the current expenditure represents 48.9% of the total budget, while the capital expenditure represents 51.10% of the budget. According to the governor, the expected total inflow in the current revenue of the 2020 fiscal year is 106 billion, 938 million, 547,316 naira only. This is made up of 67 billion, 249 million, 
400,000 Naira from the statutory allocation of the Federation accounts, representing 62.98% of the recurrence revenue, while the independent revenue is projected to be 39 billion, 289 million, 247,316 Naira, representing 37.11%. He further explained that his administration will in 2020 work to ensure completion of ongoing projects while re envisioning new ones that will open new frontiers as well as eliminate waste and unjustified expenditures that are not directly linked to the policy objective espoused in the budget. <laughs> Responding, the Speaker at the State House of Assembly, Chinodum Oji, while commanding Governor Okeze Ipazo for the early presentation of the budget, expressed hope that subsequent draft estimates will follow suit. He promised to give the bill prompt to legislative action and assured of unalloyed support of the 7th House of Assembly to Governor Ipazo's administration. <laughs> The budget is Christian's budget of economic repositioning. Nora Okafor. The state governor of the state has secured the go ahead of the African Development Bank, private investors, and other multilateral institutions for the investment of $430 million to fast track the development of the Indian Bioeconomic City. The cities are proposed free trade zone with independent business registry, labor law, bio regulations, and more located between Abba and Port Harcourt. The governor who spoke in Lagos during an interaction with journalists said he presented the Indian Economic City to investors at the Just So Good Africa Investment Forum held in Johannesburg, South Africa. He said many of the participants at the forum agreed that the Indian Economic City is a project worthy of their commitment and demonstrated their willingness to invest in the city. The project is probably led by stakeholders, including the local community, the United States government, and the federal government. We also thank the federal government for supporting the project, which is said to create no less than 700,000 jobs in 10 years. Pregnant women have been advised to always undergo healthy exercise to prevent swollen legs, otherwise known as pedal edema. A medical practitioner, Michael Michael Wong, gave the advice in an exclusive third view, in third view with MCO News on piercing and prevention of the medical condition during pregnancy. Precious is in As pregnancy progresses, fluid may accumulate in tissues, usually in the feet, ankles, and legs, causing them to swell and appear puffy. According to medical experts, this condition is called edema. There are many types of edema, but the type commonly associated with pregnancy is the pedal edema. It occurs when fluid gathers in one's feet and lower legs, making it difficult to move around as such persons hardly feel their feet. A medical practitioner, Dr. Michael Akawa, says there are several factors that cause pedal edema during pregnancy. These include standing for too long, intake of diet low in potassium, high level of caffeine consumption, among others. Well, naturally, when uh, somebody is pregnant, there are some physiological changes that are taking place. The feeling increases, and then there uh, is a preparation, and then uh, the body, you know, weight, body size will also increase. This is in response, that in preparation for what we did not expect. You know, usually that's increase in body size. Uh, then for the, so the organs of the body are stimulated to get ready for a big job. 
according to him, slight swelling is expected during pregnancy as the fluid helps prepare the pelvic joints and tissues to open for delivery. He warns, however, that if one experiences sudden swelling in one's hands and feet, it could be a sign of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a pregnancy complication characterized by high blood pressure and signs of damage to other organs like the liver and kidneys. Hence, one must see a doctor. Dr. Akala speaks further on preventions. And the better thing that we can be encouraged to be keeping her let's see, when she's uh, sitting, she should uh, lie in that sleep and you can see, you know, let's see, you can see, before, 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 before man, you can see, 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 you can you can see, you can see, you can see, you can see, you the swelling has reduced. But as long as the blood pressure is okay and there's no protein in, in, in the urine, fine. And then the gas swelling is not frightening. With this expert advice on edema during pregnancy and its prevention, he expected that pregnant women would begin to take precautionary measures against this condition. Pregnant women are also advised to sleep sideways for a healthy pregnancy. Precious Izibu, MCL News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Monday disclosed that Igbo State has recorded the highest number of cyber crimes in Southeast geopolitical Union. The Commission also declared that it has convicted over 90 suspects for various financial crimes within the Southeast in 2019. Regional Commander of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in the Southeast, Usman Imam, made a disclosure at the Sustained Anti-Corruption Situation Room organized by Human and Environmental Development Agenda. A man who expressed dismay over the increasing rate of cyber crimes in Igbo state said the rate of crime in the state was really disturbing, adding that official statistics in court about the state was really alarming. The People's Democratic Party's candidate in Kogis State, Musa Wada, has rejected the results announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Wada, who addressed journalists shortly after the results were announced on Monday, described the election as a declaration of war against citizens of Kogis State. He also insisted on using every legal means to repeal his mandate. The PDP's agent in the state, Joe Agada also maintained that the results announced by the electoral umpire is not a true reflection of the wishes of the voters. He stressed that the election was marked by violence, intimidation, and ballot box snatching. According to the results announced, the APC candidate Ahaya Bello polled a total of 406,222, while most of the People's Democratic Party scored 189,704 votes. The candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Natasha Oti, Canada, a total of 9,482 votes. The United States Governor's Forum has congratulated Bayasa Governor elect David Lyon and re elected Kogi Governor Yahaya Bello over their victories in the last Saturday's elections. The chairman of the Forum of Plato State Governor Simon Lalong also rejoiced with the All Progressive Congress over the victory of his two candidates in the elections. Lalong, in a congratulatory message issued by his Director of Press and Public Relations, Simon Macham, described Lyon's victory as a demonstration of the people's confidence in his ability to perform. The Northern States Governor's Forum Chairman said that the other people had no doubt in his ability uh, to deliver the change in line with the vision of the All Progressive Congress. He said that the re-election of Bill was yet another sign of confidence imposed on him by the Kogi people. Lalong said it was also an opportunity for the state government and the people to work harder in taking the states to the next level. Leaders of the All Progressive Congress in Bayelsa State has given reason for visiting former presidents of Nigeria, Kuloke Bella Jonathan, after Saturday's governorship election. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Terry Puyi Silva, led other APC leaders, including the governor elect David Lyon, to visit the former president's home on Monday. Silva said the APC governor spoke Jonathan and visited a recognition of his position as the father and leader of the state. To note that as a former president and leader of the state, Jonathan deserves to be respected and honored by all Bayelsa people, irrespective of their party leanings. 
they added that his influence will always be needed to advance the course of governance in Bayasa states. Lawyer Femi Falana says the National Assembly has no power to enact a law on his speech for the entire country. Falana said that's why discussing as a panel is a digital voting summit in Abuja. He said that such law was not within the purview of the National Assembly but the state. The senior advocate of Nigeria said that while the issue of hate speech fell on by a residual list, the National Assembly was empowered to legislate on an exclusive and concurrent list. According to him, Section 4 of the Constitution empowers the National Assembly to only legislate on matters in the exclusive and concurrent list. He explained that if any state had any reason to legislate on hate speech, he can do so within their jurisdiction. Falana said that the cyber campaigns are taking care of the entire affairs regarding hate speech by making stringent conditions, including fine and prison terms, for offenders. I will now take you straight to our baptism for this update with Stella Mando. All right, thank you, Mara, and good morning, Arben. Straight up to the news from APA. President Mohamed Buhari and Monday met behind closed doors with Bayasa Governor elect David Leon, uh, the presidential villa Abuja. The governor elect was accompanied on the visit by national chairman of the APC, Adam Sushomale, Governor Atiku Bagudu of Kebe State, Governor Babalu Abubakar Chigawa, as well as Minister of State, Petroleum Resources. Timothy Silva, Leon, the All Progressive Congress APC Governorship candidate in the November 16 election in Bayasa was declared a winner after pulling 352,552 votes. Leon defeated his closest rival, Dio Dewey, of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, who scored 143,172 votes. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has officially declared the incumbent governor, Yahya Bello, as the winner of last Saturday's governorship election in Kobe State. Announcement of the result was put on hold on Sunday evening after result in 19 out of the 21 council areas were released by INEC. The commission said that they were still awaiting results from Lokuja and Ibaji council areas. It also added that clarification on results from the Kina was needed. However, with the results announced on Sunday, a bill of the Our Progressive Congress was cruising to an easy win over the candidate of the Proposed Democratic Party, Musawada. After announcing the remaining results of the poll at INEC office in Dokoja Monday, returning officer Professor Ibrahim Omar said Bello had a total of 406,222 votes to defeat his closest rival, Wada, who pulled 189,704 votes. But after the announcement, PDP urgent refused to sign the results declared by INEC. The party had on Sunday disassociated itself from the results with rather alleging irregularities and voter intimidation by APC folks and state-wide filings during the conduct of the poll. He described the figures announced by INEC as fictitious. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC is set to announce a date for a supplementary election after it declared the rerun of an election in Kogi West Senatorial District held on Saturday, November 16, 2019, inconclusive. While the dates for the supplementary election will be announced later, the electoral body declared a rerun of an election inconclusive. This is because the margin of win is less than the total council votes. INEC says that the All Progressive Congress APC candidate Senator Smart Abdeyemi scored a total of 80,118 votes, while the People's Democratic Party PDP Senator candidate Senator Dino Milaya scored 59,548 votes. 
the returning officer, Professor Olai Indilawa, stated that the margin between the two candidates is 20,570. Lawa, who declared the election inconclusive, said he decided not to declare a winner because of the slim margin between the two leading candidates. This Saturday election was held after Milai lost his appeal against the decision of the National Assembly and State Assembly Election Petitions Tribunal to sack him as a senator representing Kogi West. The election tribunal had sacked Milai as a representative of the Kogi West Senatorial District in the Senate in a ruling in August. The people of the Burmese states have been urged to embark on free planting in order to combat climate change. The President of Earth Environment and Climate Care Ambassador James Aja said this has become necessary as the earth temperature increases owing to global warming. Mr. Aja expressed dissatisfaction over the high rate of deforestation. The Burmese states corresponded in GK Ekele has the details. Trees can increase soil quality, stability, reduce the impact of flooding, and provide vital habitation for wildlife. This is why a non governmental organization known as Earth Environment and Climate Care Ambassadors flagged off a campaign on climate change control in a born state to enlighten people on the benefit of tree planting. The president of the NGO, Mr. James Aja, said that his organization is targeted at planting over 5 million trees across the state before June 2020. <laughs> worried that the increase in tree cutting can cause damage to our soil and advise people to plant two trees if they must cut one. <laughs> Next season is said to be mostly economic trees. I am OGK Ikele, MCL TV News. Following the alarm raised by the Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, Futo, Francis Sezi, over the destruction of their farms by his men, the herders have been given 24 hours to forget the institution. This was made known to newsmen and Sunday in a way from the coalition of South East Youth Leaders led by Gunlo Iben. The uh, coalition of South East Youth Leaders also called on Governor Meki Hendiwa of Imo State to move into action now before it is too late. This follows the outcry by Futo VC on their predicament over the activities of herdsmen, stressing that the herders' activities can cause them shortage of food due to the damages on their farms. The VC also said that not only the herdsmen are destroying farms but also harassing their students with cattle. Reacting, the coalition condemned in strong terms the inclusion of Federal University of Technology or Futo by Herd. Fulani has men who have taken over the school environment as its new settlement for grazing and habitation with their goods and cattle. They also conducted they also concluded sorry, that the inclusion of the herders into the school environment clearly depicts that the school premises are also proper are not properly fenced. They called on Governor Lucky Hedwana to urgently make arrangements with the security agencies to evacuate the Hesmen from the school environment to avoid any future clash with the students. The academic staff union of universities insists its members will not enroll on the integrated payroll and personal information system. The body said on Monday it will decide its next action should the federal government decide to stop the salaries of its members. The ASU National Vice Chair. 
President Professor Emmanuel Sudeke said that this during an interview at the ASU Heroes Day celebration in Abuja. The union met with the National Assembly on October 28 to make it known on the IPPRS. On sets for marks in some universities, the ASU chief said some lecturers have been sacked and others jailed for sexual misconduct, noting that the union will not tolerate such behavior. Another the following scene, U.S. President Donald Trump indicated publicly on Monday that he might be willing to testify in the impeachment inquiry. The House of Representatives have not fully called Trump as a witness in the inquiry into whether he tries to get Ukraine to investigate domestic opponents to Biden, a leading contender for the Democratic nomination in 2020. Democrats are looking into whether Trump withheld three hundred and ninety one million dollars to help Ukraine, a US army combat Russia backed separatists as leverage to get Kyiv to investigate Biden. The money was later approved by the US Congress. House Speaker Nancy Pelusi on Sunday said that Trump had every opportunity to present his case. That's what you're going to take on today's news segment from our studio. We'll go for a break. When we come back, more news headlines will be coming your way. That will be on our newspaper if you to stay with us. Abia State with posters. Do not defecate on our streets. Do 
Lot Lita Abia State. My brothers, I say, what the man will do for this world? What people will not go talk? If you talk, do not urinate in public places. You know, talk and go talk. What do you make me do for this world? I say, make me do the things where we carry my hands. My soul won't want that. I be my be so. Keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by MCL TV. Welcome to MCL Customer Care Service Information. Please listen to the following instruction upon observation of any of the following on your television screen. Bad signal. Kindly check the positioning of your antenna or system wire connection. Initial card failure or card error. Please remove and bring your smart card to the office. One is your subscription. Airtime expires. Program the right or time expired will appear on the screen of the TV set. If you pay for the renewal of your subscription, please leave it on channel 7 for a couple of minutes. When there is a heavy thunderstorm, unplug power cord from the socket. For more inquiry, call us in the on 080-37-37-3985 or in Homa on 080-63-820-685 or you can call the technical department 081-401-81602 or visit our accredited agents around the state.
It's celebration time. MCR TV celebrating the 10th anniversary of its popular breakfast program, Good Morning Abia. You mean MCR TV Good Morning Abia is 10 years? Yes. The program that discusses diverse issues every day, Monday through Saturday, 8 o'clock to 10 in the morning. Social, political, cultural, economic, educative, and trending issues. MCR TV invites our friends and personalities who are featured. It's celebration time. MCR TV celebrating the 10th anniversary of its popular breakfast program, Good Morning Abia. You mean MCR TV Good Morning Abia is 10 years? Yes. The program that discusses diverse issues every day, Monday through Saturday, 8 o'clock to 10 in the morning. Social, political, cultural, economic, educative, and trending issues. MCR TV invites our friends and personalities who have featured on Good Morning Abia over the years. It will be exciting with moments to recall and celebrate. It will be a time to honor our regular guests. While pioneer guests will have the opportunity of appearing again on the program, the event will also feature the cutting of anniversary cake. MCR TV, the world in your home. For staying with us, you're still watching Good Morning Abia, your one stop breakfast show on CLTV. It is now time for us to go through the papers, and as usual, we are starting with um, the Daily Sun. At the top right of the Daily Sun newspaper this morning, Malabo, federal government to extradite SAGF, a ducky over 288.6 billion now in jail. EFCC forwards arrest warrants, charges to Interpol. Malami denies knowledge of S Minister. Of Dubai arrest. It's found on page 6 of the Daily Sun newspaper. The body with a headline the aftermath of Gubapu's loss, PDP declares war over Bayasa and Kogi elections. Dewey Wada prepared for tribunal. Our victory was made easy, says Silva. Robbery regrets violence in Kogi. Congratulates Leon. Belu, Lawa governors, Kalu, others too. All this you can get on page 12. Now uh, moving down the feature element, Governor Fanyu Guani of Inugu State laying the foundation stone for the construction of an ultra model civic hall at Ndia and named the local government council yesterday. With him are uh, the former deputy president of the Senate, Ikebe Madu, House of Representative member and named the Agu Oji River Federal Constituency, Toby Okichuku, and of course other government officials. Close out to the picture elements that he says no quick notice to his men in the state, says Governor Mekai Hedioha. It's found on page 40. Underneath that, NYSC church fight over orientation materials in Anambra State. Go to page 40 and get the story. Moving down, what government sees on three bridges in Portacot? Go to page 41. 
on a bit it's different page of the nation we spoke a permanent secretary pregnant wife two kids born to death in Benue go to page four and get this story it's a sad one dude. now move straight up to the back page where it will at top there it says god father god son will go to page four to seven and know what the headline is actually talking about and the next one says the wild ways of university supervisors go to page four to four and get that Ojo Zokano Public Forum, it says Dawa at 80, a map of nationalism. Where you see the picture of the of Dawa. And of course, um, just to spice up your day, citizen Joe says, I will oppose a speech bill if it infringes on fundamental rights of Nigerians, says Senator Ipunifi. And the best one says, correct, good representation. And to the next paper on our desk this morning, talking about the nation newspaper. At the top left, uh, Ibazo presents 136 billion naira budget, and the right top 69.8 billion naira for capital projects. Go to page six and get the story. Senator gets a threat over his speech bill. No going back. It's found on page 40. Igalo anoint Ushimen successor, his new kid on the block. That's for sports lovers. You can get the story on page 47. Reverse severe killings, second suspects to appear in court soon. Go to page 5 and get the story. And of course, the picture element, the first one, jubilation over Leon's victory in Yenagua yesterday. The next one is the um, Leon at Asa Villa yesterday. And the major headline says, Leon, I will serve the people. Governor, let's meet Buhari Jonathan. As President says, agenda for Leon is most peaceful food since 1999, says Oshamale. I won, says Joye D. And all these you can get on page 7 of the Nation newspaper. Moving down, NDDC debt, National Assembly probes NLNG Shell and 15 other IOCs. We got the story on page 8. Malabo oil block, EFCC sends charges against our decade to Interpol and no doubt $1.3 billion fast forward and covered as AGF's lawyer writes Malami. Go to page 8 and get the details. But I need to the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper. Emo government disowns ultimatum to Hessman. Go to page 6. Ayade is governor of the year. <laughs> When you go to page six of the nation and get the details, you know what um, who is saying that. Now let's move thread to the back page. At the back page there, where well, you come to comment and debate on Latin Jibari at Tom Abroad, it says the coming realignment. The coming realignment, where you see the picture element of President Muhammad Buhari and of course the um, former Vice President of Tiko Abubaka. And the first one moving down to the repos. Health thieves get one week community service, says the news. And the response there, yes, let him sweep the third mainland bridge for two weeks. And that was it with um, the nation newspaper this morning. Coming to the new telegraph, at the top there, back in industry earnings to hit. Let me take it again, back in industry earnings to hit. 4.9 trillion naira says Afri Invest and profile profits will rise to 1.178 trillion naira as fast as structural reforms. Go to page 6. Cardinals lay seeds to customs office protesting of businesses. Go to page 32. Moving down the total, Nigeria's on top oil assets hit 1 trillion barrels. It's found on page 7 of the New Telegraph. MBS rise in food prices push inflation to 11.61%. The story you can get on page 7. Famous permanent secretary, pregnant wife, children, born to death. It's a sad story, but you need to go to page 8 and read up the story. One billion dollar debt and context over as minister's assets. It's found on page 30. And the major headline in front of uh, the new telegraph, Kogi Bayasa Pools, 
Lady Vicroy's file says God will judge INEC and Inspector General of Police and the first right of law division and says what are security agencies coordinators stealing of people's votes? Dewey, why I must be declared by a self governor elect? Presidency to PDP, you are a disgrace for uh, rejecting police resorts. <laughs> PDP and APC are actually uh, battling words. But um, the next one says Bello wins re election, defeats PDP with uh, 216,518 votes. All this you can get on pages 4, 7, 11, and 12 of the new telegraph. And um, the new um, the picture element, Governor elect of Biasa states David Leon, uh, President Mohamed Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja yesterday. Underneath the Senate's hate speech bill, unrelated to third term, sponsor death penalty, others object, sponsor death penalty, others subject to amendment. It's found on page four. High fat diets by mothers could cause brain damage in newborn children. That's on health. Go to page 10. I got this story. Move straight up to the back page of the new telegraph. The last eight years, the burden of nationalism coming from Ojo Zokalo, a guest communist. And of course, uh, get that through at the back page of uh, the new telegraph. And that does it with um, the newspaper review this morning. Just immediately after the program, go to the nearest vendor, buy any of the paper so that you'll be able to read out the headline of uh, what we read out to you uh, this morning. You're still watching Good Morning, uh, there you are, one stop and fast show on MCL TV. It's back to Nora Okafor to continue with the rest of the program. Face Abia State with posters. Do not defecate in our streets. Do not litter Abia State. I say, what did man go do for this world where people not go talk? If you talk, do not urinate in public places. You know, talk and go talk. What did man go do for this world? I say, let me go do the things where we carry my hands. My soul won't wonder. I did not be so. Keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by MCL TV. It's celebration time. 
MCR TV celebrating the 10th anniversary of its popular breakfast program, Good Morning Abia. You mean MCR TV Good Morning Abia is 10 years? Yes! The program that discusses diverse issues every day, Monday through Saturday, 8 o'clock to 10 in the morning. Social, political, cultural, economic, educative, and trending issues. MCR TV invites our friends and personalities who are featured. It's celebration time. MCR TV celebrating the 10th anniversary of its popular breakfast program, Good Morning Abia. You mean MCR TV Good Morning Abia is 10 years? Yes! The program that discusses diverse issues every day, Monday through Saturday, 8 o'clock to 10 in the morning. Social, political, cultural, economic, educative, and trending issues. MCR TV invites our friends and personalities who are featured on Good Morning Abia over the years, it will be exciting with moments to recall and celebrate. It will be a time to honor our regular guests while pioneer guests will have the opportunity of appearing again on the program. The event will also feature the cutting of anniversary pay. MCR TV, the world in your home. Hello, my name is Buchi. Keep watching MCL TV and don't go away. God has given you victory. He has given you victory. Aye, aye. God has given you victory. Aye, aye. He has given you victory. What's up, people? It's your boy E Ben, ministering to God's children. And you're watching MCL TV. Don't talk that dab. Peace. I love you. MCL, the world in your home.
this rap I'm doing is a personal thing. It's, it's, it's about me, about my country, and what I face. Are you guys ready? Okay. My dreams are like torments. My every moment. Voices on my brain of friends that were slain. Friends like Loal who died by my side of starvation. We used to raid villages, stealing chickens, goats and sheep, anything we could eat. I knew it was rude, but we needed food. And therefore I was forced to sin, forced to sin to make a living. Sometimes you gotta lose to win, never give up, never give in. Left home at the age of seven, one year later I live with an AK-47. By my side slept with one eye open wide, run dark, play dead and hide. I've seen my people die like flies. Yiddish, Yiddish, I'm on a fight. Day and night, sometimes I'm doing wrong in order to make things right. It's like I'm living a dream, first time. I'm feeling like a human being, ah. Uh. The children of God, for your empty bellies on the telly, now it's you that I'm fighting for. Ask God questions, what am I here for? Why my people poor? Innocent people die every day. And I ask God why and why. When the rest of the children were learning how to read and write, I was learning how to fight. That's my story. The child is born, the child is free, you see. They don't know who can be their enemy. I've lost my childhood. But at the moment I'm moving with what I have and what I can achieve. The Southern Sudan, they were literally fighting a war of survival. What future do they have in the midst of this conflict and their village to being destroyed and their families being displaced? It's very dangerous if you give somebody who has nothing to lose a weapon. Just about anybody you talk to from today, and have a mind fog of the story to tell. And had you lived through a court run, you would be on your analyst's couch, weeping for the rest of your life. They have lived through the hell. Fall in love. You don't make me fall in love. 
Amaranth is the one that just call me. Come here, come here. You're watching. Ah, MCL TV. Huh? You're about to buy new energy. I'm trying to reach out to you. All the way from.
that was the reason I'm sorry as well. Okay, uh, I'm not telling you that actually discovered that SLP in Nigeria, including my best state, yeah. is a um, poor infrastructure, inadequate infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that the, the, um, the poor state of infrastructure has been a major obstacle for yeah. achieving this, especially power. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and not only few entrepreneurs in Abia can actually survive without um, adequate power supply. Because you just talked about mega works and all of that, and they need power to actually succeed. And apart from lack of power, lack of good access roads and all that, social amenities have also contributed to the decline of the growth. And what are you planning to do with this regard? Well, um, this, uh, this current executive council, uh, the governor has promoted uh, collaboration between ministries. So um, as much as we exist to serve as SMEs, we know that through collaboration with other ministries that we will bring together a more, um, a more suitable solution. So as we, as we all know, there is ongoing work on a daily basis. Uh, even on the way to your studio, we pass through some of those that are being rehabilitated. So those are the things that the administration is focused on in terms of increasing and improving upon the infrastructure so we can fix these, uh, these issues that some of have. And when it comes to power, um, we no longer have only one uh, source of power, which is, you know, as we all know, like the, the traditional the, the power plant to your house. Now we have solar power, renewable energy that can be used. For example, uh, in an area like it, there was a, uh, there was a power plant that was, uh, right there, I believe it was earlier this year, the vice president came down. So those are the major steps that are being taken to aid these people, aid these, uh, these entrepreneurs to, uh, to succeed. Now, of course, you're actually coming from a different time um, where power is a major, um, maybe say major benefit. Which one? Really? <laughs> really? You, you know what I'm talking about. Of course, the work of the Nigerian system where basically almost every day you have to see um, that it's no power and then a lot of people suffer. Yes. Yeah. And you talked about solar power. Yes. Yeah. You also understand that so many people cannot afford this because of these high costs. Well, it's beyond the area where costs are less we have a power supply. There are also all the dollars there. My question is, do you don't you think this will actually affect the growth and development of SLEs in our state? If something is not done quickly to ensure that um, Abbe actually have agreed where power can be taxed for to help those people? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, it's, 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 it's something that we grapple with every day. But in terms of solutions, that is what we're working on now. Which is why I reference the market that cluster because that is that is the blueprint moving forward. Um, is to create these clusters and not just have them scattered everywhere. Yes, we will go out to meet the individual SMEs, but the plan is to bring them together because when they're together, they have more organization and then they have actually more access to national and international markets. So when you bring them together and you cluster them around and then you build power structures that are around that area, because clearly once there is a group, there will be demand, and with that demand also, that will also uh, create like a dominant effect, which will eventually go through the system, so. Well, access to funds, I'm actually looking at the challenges because I know there are a lot of challenges yeah. affecting this. Access to funds is one of the major challenges. In fact, it's actually difficult for most entrepreneurs to have access to funds and yeah. capital, yeah. talking about startups. And of course, most Nigerian banks too do not give this anymore. They want to be sure of what they can get in return. Okay. And those people do not have it. And I was one of such states that do not have uh, microfinance banks or even a state-owned microfinance bank that can actually help those people. Yeah. Are you also thinking of collaborating with the banks in Kabia to make these people have access to form all these soft loans? Um, well, I say it before that uh, we wanted to increase the level of financial education because I feel like that is part of the mistrust that exists in the system. Okay. Um, we all know that there is money out there, but money does not exist in the vacuum. If uh, money is given, it has to be paid for someone. So when I say that we would educate these entrepreneurs, it's to teach them that if I give you 5000 okay. you have to pay that 5000 back. And now what you do with that 5000 is up to you in terms of your business. You can use it to grow your business, but the wise thing to do is to use it to grow your business, return it, and then keep growing from there. So we definitely are in partnerships with uh, 
already there's an ongoing uh, uh, partnership with South Bank um, and the assemblies, which we had a fair uh, trade fair in Madan, I believe, with my first day of work. <laughs> After the inauguration, my first day of work, I drove to Madan, um, and there were uh, over 200 assemblies gathered in the hall. Um, I think my boss was the deputy governor came, the commissioner of trade and investment conference in the board was there. Um, and uh, we are offering them single budget interest loans okay. um, for, their, for their businesses. So that is something that we are currently doing in, in addition to other, other activities that we have. But what we're doing also is using that as a um, way to register as SMEs. So when they come in, we register with the information and pictures. We have data on, on what they're currently doing. Well, I stated that. Yeah, we have data on what they're currently doing. And then we're building this registry because this registry, as I said, will be crucial moving forward. Because part of this trust is the lack of data. When we have these, uh, these entrepreneurs there that are actually uh, collected, like the data collected, um, when you go to the guys at Seed Partnership and you show them this data, that these entrepreneurs have been through their state, they trained, they are aware of the uh, pitfalls and what they need to do, and they can be trusted, we can vouch for them. Those are the things that we're trying to do to alleviate the distrust in the system. Because obviously, we know that most of the people we want to know do not have access to credit. And they've been essentially shut out of the system. The most crucial part of the economy is literally being shut out of the system. Because if you look at it, large companies, the risk is huge if they fail. But with SMEs, they start to fail every day. There's a high rate of of failure in SME. You not only have to reduce that, but you also have to educate them to get to the level where they can possibly succeed and be trusted. Now, look at the unfair competition. Um, we have situations where, well, kudos to the state government who has already promoted to make another campaign and focus yes. on the increase. Yes. Well, the unfair competition still continues. Mm -hmm. Because state is only this. Most of us do not want to patronize our own. We want to buy things that can actually be get us quality. Mm -hmm. We want to buy things that will last. Yeah. And uh, in, in looking at the market, you see that just a few persons that we selected for do this quality. So the general market is um, doing the general production where everything goes for everybody. And then looking at sustainable approach. Yes. So ending a fair competition for me to somebody into China, looking for things from Turkey and all of that, yeah. and focus on our own. And that sustainable approach is you're going to plan or, or build on to make this happen for Abia. Well, I spoke before uh, doing our uh, executive council retreats, uh, I believe a few weeks ago or not, but um, the government spoke of uh, collaboration. So there are bodies, uh, bodies in Nigeria and Nigeria that are focused on standards. What we want to do is everything that's produced from here, we want to attach a standard to it. Okay. Because that is essentially what will bring people back. If you buy something and you're assured, that it will be of a standard, then you will always come back. And that goes from everything from rice, Abia rice, Abia palm, uh, leather, um, everything that we do, we want to have a standard. And we are definitely on the path of that. So the meaning of that campaign is not only just saying, come buy made in Abba, but come buy quality products that are made in Abba that can be used and sold all over the world. How do we, because uh, over, over the time, or over times, I've actually looked at the Made in Abba campaign, and I've seen that just a few persons that are being promoted. And we have a lot, thousands of people out there who will produce more quality products, sorry uh, to say this, than those who promote. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't appear that some of those people will feel irritated, they feel rejected. Left out. Uh, yeah, left out yeah. in the process. Yeah, and do, you have, do you have plans? How do you intend to bring everybody under one umbrella so that everyone can actually feel the love the promotion of first things? Because the more you bring them together, the more we encourage them to promote quality and not quantity. Well, um, I can't promise to bring everyone under the umbrella, but uh, I definitely take what you're saying as uh, something that we'll be definitely focused on. Uh, what I want to do is to remove that. Uh, that uh, illusion that government is inaccessible. So I made myself very accessible. And maybe it's part of my uh, me being naive, but I really believe, I really believe that through that, uh, that communication, when we will actually get the true information that we need to actually succeed. Because a lot 
lot of our, uh, our people know what the truth is. If we just ask them, like, how can we help you? Then they'll tell us how we can help them. Instead of us sometimes drafting policies that maybe don't fit into improving their situations. Um, it doesn't mean that what's been done hasn't been effective, but we are always looking to improve. So people who have been entrepreneurs who have been left out, that they feel left out, will definitely be given chances to engage. And once they show, once they prove that they belong there, they might definitely be there. There's just a platform is there for them to succeed. You actually took, you took about collaboration with um, some standard organizations in Nigeria. Yeah. Talking about CAC, yeah. the organization, NAFTA, yeah. some of them. Yes. Yeah. But I'm also, are you actually aware of the creative bottleneck that this government and this is create that affects the growth of SLP? I'm glad you asked that. Um, we have a one-stop shop in our office. Okay. Now, this one-stop shop uh, is uh, it consists of most all of these agencies, SLM, NAFDAQ, uh, BOI, house under one roof. So when you come into this my office and you want to start a business, every one of those agents from these uh, organizations are there to give the information that you need. Now, um, I am also a CEO, just like the entrepreneurs that I'm trying to help. So in my individual ministry, we preach professionalism and we also have standards. So who works with us has to adhere to the standards that we set. So when it comes to bureaucracy, um, you cannot completely iron this out. But what you can do is to set a standard that will be, that will hopefully give the people who have the confidence to come back and to believe in the system. But that's what we want to do is to create belief in the system. Well, Adia, Adia, Adia in my mind, uh, looking at the issues of multiple transactions and maybe yes. several, at several fora, several meetings, the government keeps saying we don't want spouse to collect our monies, uh, or stop them from collecting our monies, but also see them on the streets. Um, doing that, almost on daily basis. Yes. And I pay for a supper, I pay for a shop, I pay so many things to pay for. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at a growing um, entrepreneur who is even looking for money mm -hmm. to add up to this business. Yes. Please, what can we do to ensure that we have just uh, a tax to be paid to bring all these things under one umbrella rather than paying different things at different times to different individuals and agencies in other states? I'm glad you asked that question because that was actually a, uh, a dis part of discussion at the, my NATO next to me, uh, which was yesterday. And what we discussed was this issue of taxation. Um, and uh, the governor, uh, well, I don't know if I'm really allowed to say this, but we definitely have a, um, a plan to centralize and organize this taxation system because we realize that sometimes it can be confusing. If you have all these MBAs, um, ministries that are, you know, have different revenue streams and are putting agents on the streets, um, we don't want the uh, citizens to be intimidated or to feel like they are not, uh, they are going to participate in the system. So what we want to do is create a system that is centralized and uh, organized. So when that happens, you know exactly what you're paying for and where it's going. So I know that 
is problem free. Are credible. 
we should understand that INEC is just one institution. And when you come to elections, a lot of people uh, maybe uh, come into play one way or the other. Like I've always said, uh, even on this platform, uh, that uh, when we conduct elections, you discover that no INEC paid staff is actually at the polling units. They usually have an hot staff who are incidentally Nigerians. Sometimes they used to have uh, uh, coppers who are also uh, maybe young Nigerians who are expecting that things will be better in the future. Now, when you people go there,
also changed the rules and regulations. So it's what they're not doing. Now, <laughs> you also heard that INEC is an independent body, of course, having the responsibility of having elections in Nigeria and ensuring that they are free, fair, credible. Uh, that's what I'm telling you. We are saying the same thing here. We are not. You see, you see I mean, Because you have to make it look like it. I'm not going to have to come and do what we're no, supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm supposed to come and make me not to be violent. You understand what I'm saying? I think you're supposed to come and make me not to be violent. So, um, is that my next time to come and read elections too? Who reads the elections? Do I read all the elections? I read by those that are the police, by those that are the religious centers, by those who are in the government. Whose names do they bear? They are ad hoc staff. They are not kind of state staff. Of which agency? And who they paid for the job and they trained to do the job? No, I want you to understand what I'm saying. IMEC is an institution. IMEC has its own government staff. Do you understand? IMEC pays staff. And because this staff of IMEC are not just all that, they are not enough in their number to go around and ban the polling units. They usually um, maybe the priest and all staff. Just like the notice of uh, the um, uh, coppers. Come to think of it, should a copper preside over a polling unit that will at the end of the day be read, results read? The answer should be no. If a copper who is looking up to Nigeria to be a great country, looking up to, at least uh, after saying that he or she will be doing it when looking up to a better Nigeria, the person should not compromise. I think that should really be the reason behind the, the decision that and um, copper should be used to at least run this election. But unfortunately, some of them also compromise. Unfortunately, security agencies may not be able to, or are not able to provide security for the maybe election um, ad hoc staff. And these are the reasons sometimes it does that. Because I think we see somewhere. For instance, if you, the, the reason commissioner does not go to the field now, he doesn't do much. The, the chairman of the doesn't do much. The commissioner doesn't do much. The seats and the last have this results return to them. And what about the proposals? That is what I'm saying. These are not Alexa. You can you can you can go with me that this person is a professor. The point I'm going to make in the fact is that we all have a role to play. How? Let our laws be amended to reflect at least the voting, the, the voting attitude of Nigeria, which is let us vote in those who want to vote in and vote out those who want to vote out. Let us stop writing this up. Let us stop violence. Because by the time we start the rules of electronic voting system, somebody will simply realize if I cut away the, the, the ballot box and cut away the ballot papers, that it will not benefit my candidate. So why would I do that? The security agency should also at least rise up to the occasion and ensure that the election venue, that polling units are properly cordoned off. So that before anybody can penetrate and perhaps maybe destroy the election, it will be difficult. Because sometimes you see in an in 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 election polling unit, you can only find two policemen. Sometimes they are not even armed. And when they are there, some of these youths who perhaps are working for their pay masters will just rush in, have everybody chase the move, and they will cut away uh, the materials, sometimes destroy them, so that the polling unit will not even have results. That's important. But these people are also Nigerians. They will still be one of those that will start writing tomorrow because after being used like these petitions, most times they are dogs. And when they are done, so they start, they take to uh, committing crimes here and there. So that uh, value reorientation is what is required. Let all of us change our attitude towards election. If you have a panic, let our Lord go to our Lord go to amend them. Let there be a sort of um, uh, um, a special court that will be trying election offenders. So at the end of the day, people will also be scared. How many election offenders have been tried in Nigeria. Nobody has been tried for committing any electoral offense. So if we do this, we amend our laws, change our attitude, it goes to help my Every time we blame my neck. And it is also an institution that has had it up to up to maybe 10,000 staff, so to speak. But during the election, they use more than 20, 30,000 staff. You understand? And these are Nigerians. Some of them, the reason they go for the lecturers, not the professors, is because they believe that these people should be made of integrity. Men and women of integrity who are cynical, who will want the best for the country, who will not compromise, who will not because of money. But, sir, you know, do you think that they are not supposed to do? But most times, 
This is not the record. Well, you talked about it on October 14th, which you want to know, Gerard Gerard Dodds. Yes. Are you also aware that even the cadre that have not been actually well maxed out by the electoral umpire in Nigeria, that they are still in the same place? Yes. 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 Well, will it solve any problem? Uh, well, yes, it will solve a lot of problems. But at least it will solve the problem of resort writing. People will no longer write resort first. Now, let us first of all incorporate it in our laws. Let us also start using it. Then, as we start using it, the problems associated with it will also emerge and we keep solving them one after the other. The truth is that. Something like um, when you go to this uh, uh, big brother program, people can vote electronically. All right? Then why can't we do it? You understand? It's just because people who build it uh, from the system, the way it is, we don't want it to be enhanced. We don't want the system to change. That's the problem. Nigerians sabotage the, the, the country to move forward and better, particularly the, uh, the maybe electoral process. Because sometimes they will be the ones to. Invent a way of ensuring that these things don't work. Because if you have a mind, the majority of the people who are in power today, if the elections are free, fair, and credible, will not be there. If people are allowed to vote and their vote count, a lot of people who are occupying so many strong positions today may not be there. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. And these are the people who may not even want the electronic voting system to come into uh, But then they can't do that if you have not even mastered it. They're not doing time to make the other one work. Do you know why do, do you know why people don't even uh, look at the candidate as anything? Because the law does not support it. So the idea of the law of using candidates as uh, systems? No, no, they are not deceiving anybody. This is so, a very... Uh, they are, because... No, look at it. Yes. It's, 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 Cancelled, and we appear that the cause and we are told to the cabinet that doesn't make sense. So, why do they have to put their hands through a lot of strength? No, it is not INEC. INEC has good intentions for Nigerian electoral process. Mm, yes, but the, problem, the problem is the political class. Remember, so are you saying that INEC is no longer an independent body? How? No, I think it's only very but then the law does not allow you to do what you're doing now. I just introduced the use of carry that. You understand what I'm saying? In 2015, and everybody was clapping. Unfortunately, when it got to the courts, you understand what I'm saying? It was thrown away because it has no backing of the law. You know, they only brought it in by way of the Amanwa, which is a sort of a program initiated based on the law, having given the power to do it. But this thing has no backing of the law. It was thrown away. Politicians were expected to at least bring it up as a bill, pass into law, and then it becomes our law. But we now keep on or we start managing it, learning the process. At least learning begins from one day. So if we start managing the electronic voting system, before we know it, we will certainly be accustomed with it, and then we start managing it, and it will better our electoral process. But as we see, I just cannot just throw it away because it is a good initiative. What we are expecting that the, the, the political class should do is to make this thing part of our electoral laws so that now we are taking it to mean that we are learning the process. So if it will come part of our law, we will have been able to discover one or two lapses associated with it and it could be taken care of. And a lot of people are also not how to operate it. So if we run away from it, these people will keep on doing election. They will keep on writing results. And the people who don't expect to be our leaders will keep on being our leaders and then for us subjecting us to hardship. So they should certainly keep on using it, learning how to use it. And then the law cannot conduct free, fair, and credible election. It is not possible. Now, now let's look at the answer election. Uh, uh, the outcome, how did you receive it? Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, not from the answer. And um, secondly, I want to believe that um, um, from the little information I have, is a member of PDP and a leader in PDP. 
So for his for his party to have lost the election, uh, there should be more to you than meet the eyes. Because I believe that he himself is even happy for what he did with this morning. And Jonathan is happy that that uh, his party lost the election. So that is to say that um, so many things happen behind the scene that perhaps could have turned the table against the uh, the, the ruling party in that state. In the first place, Southern enjoy as far as I know, because I grew up in the first place, as far as I know, is an area where the terrain is so difficult as that. So, at most times, the elections there is very difficult. But this time around, the election was very, very smooth and free. It shows that there must be a good fire within that area that has issued that disruption that made some of the militants around there to just walk on one side. That's the truth. So, I believe that something happened that made the PDP to lose that election. And the same thing happened in the police state. Our well, police state, the police state, I would want to say that. Um, and then as well as I'm not in, I'm not from Kobe and I wasn't there too. From what we have read on the basis of the newspaper as well, remember uh, that um, um, we have an incumbent there who incidentally also emerged at the tourists. I think also uh, there is also more to it. It boils down to what I have been saying. Believe you me, if we go out to vote and our votes count, nobody can get 120,000, 24,000 votes in one day. <laughs> you are going to tell them. You know how long it takes that they need them and they will start voting. The point is that sometimes these things are the things that should be an island at all of us. If all of us will agree and uh, let there be a voting system that will ensure that our vote, one man, one vote. Because most times, some of the people who spent a peer, they are, some of them are dead. Some of these uh, um, 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 voters can have not been collected. Some people are also are active. They're not even want to come out. So there's no way you will register 160,000 persons and then 130 will come out. It's practically impossible because we know how people react. Some want to go to the farm, some want to go to the market. But because the politicians keep on running into the house, they see that some of the rather have this result and you wouldn't have any view. So are you allowed that the results were written? Well, I wasn't there, but that is the practice. That is the practice. Generally, that's what politicians do. Most times they see that somewhere, have this result written, and then the value with the INEC adopts that. And you know, coming back to or say uh, the fact that INEC also failed again, that's time. Uh, you see, uh, I want you to understand something. Yeah, it's because you said. If we say I don't think, it will appear as if it is I don't that the results. Is it not? It is in the way. So, you know, let's, let's, let's look at this issue because you're looking at INEC writing the results and all that. This election is conducted by INEC for crying out loud. I agree. So, INEC is the one who monitors the election. INEC is the one who writes that election from the polling units to the collection center to the state collection center and all of that. INEC is the one who announces the results. Yes. So, are you trying to tell me that INEC is unaware of whatever they announce? But are you aware that the teacher can be in the class? Supervising an examination, where somebody will still indulge in the examination and pass without the teacher knowing. And the teacher will still take that street. Alright? Map it. And I want I want I want score. You know what I'm saying? Without the teacher knowing that this person is compromised. Now you'll be given a form where you feel. Now I make we will have, we will, we will engage in the services of ad hoc staff. And some of these ad hoc staff will compromise. Because I cannot just carry these things. I see an annual commissioner will be made a returning officer. Do you understand what I'm saying? An annual staff will be made a presiding officer. Which is so practically possible. Because they don't have enough uh, manpower to do these things. Now, the thing that my, my thing is that let there be value in your invitation. So that if you are asked to perform a duty that has to do with an election, you should be much more meticulous and careful than any other person anywhere. Because you are going to enthrone something that will affect the life of the people. So you, you ought to be careful. For whatever what I want to give you at that moment, for whatever what, what I want to promise you, do it and do it for the benefit of Nigerians and for the benefit of Nigeria. And if that is wrong, we will not be casting or uh, maybe, uh, maybe a portion of blames, say I know or not I know. Because I think you see that they are doing all these things. Sometimes they release the resistance materials and some other persons will compromise somewhere. You see, I know will see that in Abuja, for instance, 
from during election and they will be giving him reports. It's well that it's well here. When they realize the result, we're not there. Sometimes the problem is the collaboration of security agencies with their head of staff. If it's security agencies with the system, because you know somebody is like that and take it to somewhere. You understand know what I'm saying? Sometimes security agencies will, will yeah, certainly collaborate. Yeah, yeah. So I want I don't want us to continue to blow my neck. I want us to also share in the way. Each and every one of us will what was your role? What did you do? You understand know what I'm saying? Well, thanks, Mr. Mike. I think we have to continue this discussion tomorrow because uh, there's actually a lot to talk about. We might even look at the issues from that election and the lessons from it. We're not trying to um, do the peripheral on the um, lessons from Kogi and Bayasa elections we just held last week. And of course, we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. There's no problem now. We're here tomorrow. We're invited. But good for a while. Well, uh, to add that out there, I'm very sorry we had to cut short this discussion segment here. We'll continue the discussion tomorrow with William and up next will be Masawachi Omar Pia from our bus studios. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm now our car for have a beautiful day ahead. <laughs>